Today on Gems of the Nature Coast, we explore the 1912 historic courthouse in downtown Inverness. Restored to its original beauty in October of 2000, the old courthouse now has become a focal point of the downtown area. Traditionally, courthouses are symbolic of the founding, pioneer spirit of the people who settled and shaped their communities. The 1912 historic courthouse is no different, reflecting a proud heritage. So come along as we explore the history and glamour of the historic Citrus County Courthouse on Gems of the Nature Coast. Our informative tour guide for the show is going to be Kathy Turner Thompson, Historical Resources Officer with Citrus County's Division of Community Services. Uh, this building turned 100 years old two years ago. It was built in 1912, and uh, it's the second courthouse that stood here on Courthouse Square, actually. The first one was a wood Victorian building, and it was here from 1891 to the time this building was built. Um, the building um, that we're here in today is um, built in, like I said, 1912. The architect was Willis R. Biggers. He was an architect from Atlanta, Georgia, who also designed the Plant City Hillsboro High School and some other buildings in Mobile, Alabama. When he designed the building, it's a very eclectic mix of um, four architectural styles. Two European, neoclassical and Italian Renaissance, and two American styles of architecture, American and Prairie School. Uh, when the building was built in 1912, Inverness did not have electricity. However, they knew electricity was coming to Inverness because the Camp Phosphate Company had flooded the Withlacoochee River and made Lake Russo to the north. That was 1907-1908. Uh, so um, when they built the building, they built it um, sparingly with conduit for the wiring. The electricity wasn't elec actually turned on until uh, 1914. Uh, with the lights and everything. Um, the building was um, built to be um, fireproof, so it, it's built out of um, brick and concrete. Um, it's a concrete uh, structure with um, a brick facing. Uh, um, the building uh, has uh, many restrooms, probably about 12, you know, that was another modern convenience, uh, along with electricity. Uh, it housed the, um, all the courthouse and courthouse functions um, up until the 1970s. That included um, the clerk of court, the uh, property appraiser and tax collector, uh, the sheriff, the school board, and of course the judges. Um, on the first floor it was a county courtroom, and upstairs was the circuit courtroom. Citrus County did not get its first sitting circuit judge until the 1970s with Judge Edwards. Uh, so how much the uh, second floor courtroom was used, well that's kind of um, um, somewhat of a, a big question. Many cases would either go out to somewhere else in the circuit, which included Marion County, Lake County, Sumter County, and Hernando County, or the judge um, would maybe come in to hear the circuit court cases. Uh, uh, the county courtroom moved upstairs to uh, the second floor in 1978-79 when they built the new courthouse across the street. One of the most interesting events in the courthouse history has nothing to do with county politics, but more to do with Hollywood and pop culture. In 1961, the small town of Inverness got a visit from the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. That's when he was in town to film his latest movie, Follow That Dream. Yeah, it was a big deal. You know, it was the summer of um, 1961, and uh, uh, Citrus County and Inverness, they were still, it was still a small, sleepy community. In fact, um, when I first moved here the first time in 1964, the whole county population was less than 10,000. So in 1961, it was probably even a little bit smaller, and it was a big deal. Um, even though Elvis was only here a few days in the courtroom doing the courtroom scene, he was here in the county for six weeks 
He stayed over in Crystal River at the then Port Paradise Hotel, and a big portion of the movie was uh, filmed up in Levy County, on, off of Highway 40. Um, one of the two things that they were looking for when they were looking for a place to um, make the movie, one was of course for the courtroom scene, and the other was for a beach. And the film company had started out down in South Florida uh, looking for those two um, things. And I guess they found lots of beaches coming up the west coast of Florida, but not a whole lot of unoccupied courtrooms. So uh, they, were, they had made it to Citrus County and they were actually getting ready to head to Texas because there's over 260 some courthouses in Texas. And so I'm sure they were sure that they would find one there. However, um, they stopped over um, on the west side of the county and someone said they should come and check out the courthouse here. However, um, the one thing that we do not have in Citrus County or even in Levy County um, is really a lot of white sandy beaches. But that never um, you know, held up Hollywood for doing the things that they needed to do, so they brought in tons of sand and they made a white sandy beach up in English City. The county court was held in the upstairs courtroom until 1992. At this time, the courthouse was added to the U.S. National Register of Historic Places, though the inside was in a state of disrepair and desperately needed to be upgraded. Determined to preserve the history of the courthouse, the Historical Society was able to raise funds supplemented by state grants to start the restoration process in 1994. When we went to restore the second floor courtroom, uh, at that particular time there were not a lot of historic photographs um, that surfaced. So um, what, what we did was we got permission from MGM Home Studios and we took still photographs of, of the um, video. And that became like our historic photographic documentation to restore the um, second floor courtroom to the way that it looked originally. When we started our project, um, the state um, really had a very strong historic preservation program at the Department of State. They were giving out lots of um, funding for projects like this. And um, in the 90s and up through into the 2000s, early 2000s, um, there were many historic courthouses that actually were able to be rehabilitated back to their kind of original, including, um, let's see, uh, Orange County, Lake County, uh, Palm Beach County, Pasco County, and our courthouse. Um, I think our courthouse was one of the few courthouses that did not have a lot of um, things that had to re be removed from the exterior of the building because um, ours was pretty much intact. It sits on this one acre square and that's another thing that is really kind of unique to the building um, and the square and the fact that the way it's situated. It's at a 45 degree um, angles to the street grid and when you look at the courthouse square which is one acre from the air it actually looks like a diamond. The work actually started in um, 1994 it was a six-year project. We, we received several um, special funding or special category grants from the Department of State Division of Historical Resources, 1.2 million in total. Um, then we also, um, the Historical Society raised about 200,000 and the county um, also provided about 200 plus in kind to match that, but there was still a need for 600,000 to complete the building. And the Historical Society in, in 1999 went to the legislature and submitted a special funding request for $600,000 and that's what allowed us to complete the building or the restoration in October of 2000. Today um, it's used for a museum. We house the, all the county historical records, um, uh, deed records, um, property records, historic photographs, aerial photographs, um, tax records. Uh, we have um, the Citrus County Chronicles, bound issues from the 20s to the 70s. We have historic photographs, oral histories, artifacts. In fact, we have a title searcher in from Kansas today doing research in the archives. The Mary McCrae Gallery, which in 1912 served as the Office of Tax Collector and Property Appraiser, houses today the exhibit titled A Long Way Home. Here we learn the story of Citrus County from the 1800s up to recent times. You'll find details of the early settlers, businesses, homes, schools, churches, cemeteries, and public buildings. Also highlighted are the war years and the role played by Citrus Countyans. 
So the exhibit um, that you see here in this space is an exhibit titled A Long Way Home. It talks about all the people who came before us from about the time the county divided from Hernando County in 1887. It also um, interprets the industries that we had at the time, including the citrus industry, the phosphate, the turpentine, uh, the cattle ranching, uh, those kinds of things. And then this exhibit talks about the different communities, uh, Crystal River, Floral City, Inverness, Hernando, and some of the historic structures. Um, uh, in this exhibit, you learn about some of the early pioneer, pioneer families, including Uncle Alf Tompkins, um, Inverness, um, prior to Inverness was known as Tompkinsville. Um, Uncle Alf Tompkins was one of the um, early constitutional officers uh, here, uh, tax collector here in the county. Um, uh, Senator Austin Mann was um, one of the men instrumental for the dividing of the county, um, as well as uh, Clerk Zimmerman. Clerk Zimmerman, our first clerk of court. And then the Uleys, David Levy Uley, his wife, um, he was instrumental in um, the Uley uh, Plantation, the Uley Sugar Mill, and um, very instrumental in Florida for the first um, cross Florida um, Railroad. Uh, really, he was involved in the um, first constitution of Florida, and so um, there's some history in here about him. Okay, this is one of the four original clock faces. Um, today, the clock faces are, that are installed upstairs in the clock tower are made out of plexiglass. Um, so these original clock faces were made out of wood. Um, the clock in the clock tower is a Howard um, Tower Clock and Bell. Um, the two big, it's one of the two big companies, the other is Thomas Seth, that used to make these types of uh, large tower clocks. Uh, the clock face here, on the back side, um, there's some writing. Um, people who had access to the clock tower would often sign their name, like some of the original men who worked on the Copper Dome signed their name. And in fact, um, people who worked on the clock itself, including the first person, R.G. or R.H. Jackson. In 1936, he adjusted and cleaned the clock, and then his brother actually electrified the clock, probably in the 50s. Uh, that's probably about sometime in the 50s, late 50s, they probably also put the plexiglass faces up. R.G. Jackson's um, brother's son is the one that worked on it to just recently, and now his son works on it. So there's actually been three generations of one family working on the clock in the clock tower since the clock was installed over 100 years ago now. Um, another group of people who signed the back of the clock uh, face was um, some people who were there acting as spotters during World War II. Um, both, um, mostly women, but some men um, actually signed the back, back of the clock face um, while, during World War II while they were looking for enemy planes. Uh, so um, when we went to reopen the building, the local chapter of the National Association of Watch and Clockmakers actually restored these uh, clock faces, this one plus three others. And of course we used one of the clock faces when we did the um, play um, when Elvis came to town. Even today, the old courthouse serves as a storehouse for governmental and historical records for Citrus County in its restored vault maintained by the clerk of the court's office. The vault contains archival records of the county, including marriages, deeds, and plat maps dating back to 1887. This room, unlike any other room in the building, um, as you might notice in the background, there are no interior windows. All of the other gallery spaces had the interior windows, but this space was built specifically for the records. And so one thing that's really unique about the records that we have here today, and probably like no other county in the state of Florida, is the fact that not only do we have the official clerk records, um, other constitutional records, we also have the historical society um, historical records, which include um, aerial photographs, um, regular historic photographs, newspapers um, and lots of other historical information. So to be able to find all the historical uh, records of one area or one county in one repository is really kind of unique even throughout the whole state for you know historical records and so we're really um, proud of that. Next on our tour is the Brannan Family Gallery with free history of Florida since the end of the last ice age. In this gallery you'll find the Footprints in Time exhibit. Learn how early inhabitants discovered La Florida and how they impacted the area. Local middle school teacher Mr. Bianci's science class from 2004 and 2005 developed an interactive wall that captures the Earth's geological history. 
Uh, this is uh, the prehistory gallery. It's the Brennan Gallery um, family gallery of prehistory. Uh, the exhibit right now that we have installed here is called Footprints in Time. It's about all the people and the animals that came before us. And so, um, though this exhibit's only going to be here until July, um, we're in the process of revamping it. Um, it'll still tell somewhat of the same story, but it'll also add another whole component, the Chazowitzka history. Uh, so this, um, this exhibit, Footprints in Time, starts out with a paleo wall that the Inverness Middle School students made. And then it goes um, into um, talking about the three different um, groups of people that came to Florida, including the um, first people, the Paleo Indians. And then it goes into the Archaic Indians, which um, many of you might know of the Crystal River Archaeological State Park. And that was um, the late Archaic period. Um, that was that type of Indian that was at that area. Um, and then it goes into the Seminoles. The Seminoles were the last group of um, uh, P Indian people to come to Florida, and they were actually from Alabama and uh, Georgia. It was the Creek I Indians from Alabama and the Miccosukee from Georgia. They came down and they became known as Seminole in Florida. Um, uh, Spanish Cimarroni means runaway, and that's um, where the name Seminole comes from. Uh, this area, the Cove of the Wislacoochee, was a, a major stronghold during the Second Seminole Indian War. And so there was a lot of activity going on in our area associated with the Second Seminole Indian War. So uh, this gallery also tells that story. But in July, um, as we revamp this um, gallery, um, there's been an immense amount of um, artifacts uncovered from Chazowitzka. Um, there was a springs restoration um, project that occurred with um, the water management district and the county. Um, this past summer where they uncovered literally thousands of years of artifacts going back 10,000 years to the Paleo Indian times up to um, current. And so um, that was like a treasure trove of um, history uncovered in that area and some wonderful um, one-of-a-kind artifacts were found there and we will be telling um, that uh, story and exhibiting those artifacts in coming in July. When the courthouse was built in 1912, the northeast first floor area was actually home to the original county courtroom. Currently named the John Murray Davis Gallery, this area is now used for rotating exhibits, such as the Florida's Got the Blues exhibit, which highlighted Florida's roots to many notable blues artists. Of course, one of the highlights of your tour of the old courthouse We'll be visiting the second floor courtroom, which historic preservation architects were able to replicate thanks to the Elvis Presley movie, Follow That Dream. A portion of the movie was shot in the original courtroom and is today the setting for plays that relive the King's visit to Citrus County. Okay, this is the um, circuit courtroom. I had mentioned um, earlier that downstairs was the county courtroom. Well, th this was the uh, circuit courtroom. And uh, it pretty much looks today the way it did uh, when um, it was built and up until uh, 1960s. Um, in 1961, I mentioned earlier that um, the movie Follow That Dream with, with Elvis Presley was made upstairs here in the courtroom. And then after that, the courtroom changed greatly. Um, the county was starting to grow, so they needed more space and they wanted to bring it up to um, bring it up to snuff a little bit and they started remodeling it. So what they did was is they covered the flagstaff windows that you see around the perimeter of the roof. They covered those with plywood and put drop ceilings in with fluorescent lights. That covered up the um, first central air conditioning ductwork. And uh, so what they did also, they took the railing down, which is behind us here, um, behind to the uh, east of the space. They took down the railing and they put um, sheetrock and paneling over that. In fact, when we went to rehabilitate the, build, uh, rehabilitate the building back to the original, the only, when we removed all the non-original fabric, the only um, thing that was still remaining was the perimeter of the space along with the uh, maple floors here. Everything that you see behind me had to be recreated. And the way that it was, uh, we were able to do that was from the movie Follow That Dream because we did not have a lot of historic photographs of the way this space looked. So we got permission from MGM Home Studios and we took still um, photographs of the video and that became our historic photographic documentation to bring this space back to how it looked originally. 
Most of the um, functions, except for the clerk of court's office, many of the functions kind of changed over time. Uh, so when the building was first built in 1912, those offices in the back were rented out to attorneys for about $10 a month. That only lasted for about a year. And uh, then the um, county folks took back those spaces. And um, there were different functions over time. I think one time the Parks and Rec was in an office space, one time Human Resources. Um, you know, uh, to the to the right here, um, the Board of County Commission had uh, that space to the right, and the space that today the um, the restrooms housed originally the grand jury meeting room. Uh, the spaces in the back probably one would have been reserved for the judge, and and like I said, this was the city, uh, the circuit courtroom, and Citrus County did not. Um, get its first sitting circuit judge until the 1970s. So um, they used the spaces for different things depending upon what the needs were. Okay, this um, originally was Judge May's clerk's office. The space behind us that has more museum store items today, um, let's see, was Judge May and other county judges' actual office um, since the county courtroom was just this way. Um, today we have a, a wide range of um, books about Citrus County and Florida and also Elvis. Elvis, um, you know, we have the Elvis DVD, Follow That Dream, and um, things about pirates. You know, um, we had a famous pirate in our area called Juan Gomez, and that's how Gomez Rock got its name. Um, but we have Judge May's uh, Gators, Skeeters, and Malaria, and Dawn to Sunset, Back Home, and um, many other uh, books about um, Florida's unique history. Today, the old 1912 Courthouse Heritage Museum is dedicated to the active collection and preservation of the diverse cultural and natural heritage of Citrus County and adjacent areas. For a unique look into the history of Citrus County and Florida, be sure to include the 1912 Courthouse Heritage Museum on your list of sites to experience. It truly is one of the gems of the nature coast.